Well, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm pleased to see such a qualified panel of nominees before us today with two former ambassadors, as well as experienced State Department personnel with sterling records of service. And I wanna thank you and your families for your service uh, to our country. Uh, Ambassador Pazzi, uh, I look forward to hearing your views on Ethiopia, a country in the midst of a historic political transition whose outcome is of great consequence to U.S. interests. Like many others, I was impressed by the landmark political reforms implemented by Prime Minister Abe. And while I still maintain hope that Ethiopia can build a stable, prosperous democracy, recent events raise some serious concerns. Even before the conflict in Tigray, which I have condemned on the Senate floor, the levels of violence in Ethiopia were alarming. Political space has been closing for some time. Journalists and political opposition figures have been jailed along with thousands of others. Ethiopia has a once in a generation opportunity at democratic transformation, and the U.S. must do what it can to support a course correction. Unfortunately, our diplomatic efforts thus far have been insufficient. Um, uh, I think uh, we have to renew our efforts. We have to talk about how we're going to approach the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, which has a series uh, of related countries that are uh, also uh, in the issue. And I would love uh, to hear from you a fresh set of ideas how we engage with Ethiopia to advance both the interests of the United States and Ethiopians. Ms. Kirsch, uh, I love your background. It looks like an extension of your persona, so uh, the, the painting. Uh, you have been nominated to serve in a country that is making some notable progress. In 2019, Mauritania's president stepped down, making him the first Mauritanian leader to adhere to constitutional term limits. Mauritania was recently upgraded from Tier 3 to Tier 2 watch list due to the government's new anti-trafficking national action plan, as well as the conviction of five slaveholders. And remarkably, there has not been a terrorist attack in the country since 2011, considering that other countries in the sub-region are experiencing a significant increase. However, challenges remain. There is still discrimination against the Haritine ethnic group and Black Mauritanians. Slavery remains a significant problem despite government efforts. And according to the 2020 Global Terrorism Index, terrorism is falling in some regions, but it's rising in the Sahel. I hope you'll provide us today with an overview of what the administration's strategy will be for combating terrorism in the, Sah in the Sahel. In addition, I would like to know what steps you'll take uh, to improve democratic governance in Mauritania and to combat slavery. So I look forward to hearing from you. Ambassador uh, Reed Mara, I'm glad that we will be sending such an experienced diplomat uh, to Freetown. Uh, Sierra Leone is a country that can one can view with cautious optimism. With the help of the U.S. and the international community, Sierra Leone has made real progress since the end of its bitter civil war, including the fair and peaceful election of President uh, Beale in 2018. But the advent of the COVID-19 pandemic has tempered my optimism. Sierra Leone faces increasing economic pressures, which will make it more difficult to combat poverty and corruption and improve access to health care and education. I look forward to hearing how the United States can help President Beale navigate these challenges. I also look forward to hearing from Mr. McFeeters about he plan how he plans to lead our embassy in Kuala Lumpur at a time when many countries in the region, including Malaysia, are looking to the United States for help against an increasingly aggressive China. And finally, Mr. Blackstone, I have heard good things about your leadership at the Bureau of East Asian and Pacific Affairs during the COVID epidemic. I look forward to hearing from you about Timor Leste and particularly on the subject of development challenges, uh, consolidating democratic institutions, and the risk posed by increased Chinese influence. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman.